Hi everybody, it's Dylan James, Vice President with NASDAQ here, listings in the Western region. We're back um, interviewing and having more conversations with folks about San Diego Week, which is a special week at NASDAQ where we're celebrating all things San Diego. Um, I'm gonna read this, Joe, so I make sure that I get it right. So Biocom is committed to driving public policy, networking, educational and workforce programs in the STEM space. Joe Panetta is Biocom CEO, and he joins us in conversation. And one thing I want to mention, because it's certainly not lost on me, you're hosting us today. We're doing interviews from your space. So thank you very much for that. Thank you for being here. We love being in this space. I, I call it the biotech playground here. So um, we hope you enjoy it. It certainly is. I mean, it's a, it's a great, great space here at the Alexandria. Let, let's get started. Tell us a little bit about Biocom and how the organization got started. Sure. Biocom got started in uh, 1988. Back then it was called uh, the Biomedical Industry Council. We mm -hmm. changed the name uh, eventually. Uh, Biocom stands for uh, the San Diego Biocommerce Association, which we've now shortened again mm -hmm. uh, down to Biocom because we're statewide. But uh, we were started because a group of the early CEOs in biotech here in San Diego wanted uh, a a platform to be able to get together and discuss some of their challenges as a group, very few companies at the time. Um, and they created this networking group called the Biomedical Industry Council. But not long after they began to get together, they were faced with a huge challenge in that San Diego had a major drought. Mm -hmm. And the city of San Diego proposed during this drought to periodically shut the water off and the biotech industry being located within the city of San Diego became very concerned that uh, because we use water for experiments and for fermentation processes that um, the, the water might be shut off in the, in the middle of a very costly experiment or fermentation mm -hmm. run. So they got together, they went down to city council and they made a, the first ever presentation to city government about the importance of the biotech industry here in San Diego and the importance of water for the biotech industry. And they were able to negotiate an agreement whereby a new reclaimed water plant that had been built at the time here in San Diego mm -hmm. would provide them water to use for non-experimental purposes, landscaping and other kinds of things, um, in exchange for being guaranteed the potable water that they would need to do their experiments and fermentation runs. Mm -hmm. um, and so that was the beginning of the advocacy side of, mm -hmm. of Biocom. And we've since grown to do work in Sacramento and uh, in Washington, D.C., but we're, we're essentially an advocacy organization for the and we, industry. We were speaking earlier about how at that period of time, you know, there's, there's kind of two San Diegos, right? There, we're up here in Torrey Pines, La Jolla area, where all the companies are, but a lot of, uh, a lot of that policy stuff was dictated from sort of the downtown area, I'm guessing. Absolutely, and again, the industry was very young at the time. Um, the business leaders, per se, in the community were all located downtown. Mm -hmm. So there wasn't a lot of connection between the folks running biotech companies up here in the north part of the city mm -hmm. and the major business center downtown. Mm -hmm. Since then, um, we've taken our seat on the Chamber of Commerce and the Economic Development Corporation and, and, and other groups. So that biotech is prominently represented with, within the city of San Diego. But back then, we were relatively unknown. Mm -hmm. um, let's talk a little bit about what you guys do. So uh, Biocom is in the business of uh, providing a strong public voice for research institutions and life science companies and advocacy for, for the folks in that industry. What do you um, see as some of the big challenges currently within the industry? Well, our, our mission overall is to accelerate the success of our life science company members. Mm -hmm. um, and we see that companies have challenges in, in three basic areas. They have policy challenges uh, at the local, state, and federal level. Mm -hmm. They have challenges in generating the capital that they need to be able to fuel the growth of their companies. And they have challenges in attracting the talent and developing the talent that they need to be able to grow the management of their companies moving forward. So what we focus on from a, from a challenge standpoint is ensuring that uh, there's a uh, level playing field uh, in Sacramento and Washington, D.C. Mm -hmm. 
on issues like the cost of prescription drugs. Uh, that, that, that process of developing a new drug, the cost of developing a new drug, the benefit to patients uh, is uh, appreciated by legislators at the state level, at the federal mm -hmm. level. Ensuring that the intellectual property that companies generate is protected. Because for most companies, it takes 12 to 15 years to even commercialize a product. So a lot of the value in those companies uh, is, is in the intellectual property, the mm -hmm. patents that, that they have. So uh, we fight to ensure that patents are protected for, for biotech and medical device inventions. Um, on the um, capital formation side, we do a lot to bring venture capital investors here to San Diego. While we're the third largest biotech cluster in the country here in San Diego, um, we're certainly not near the top of the list when it comes to resident venture capital firms here. Right. So our companies have to go outside of San Diego to raise the capital that they need. Fortunately, they don't have to go, in some cases, too much farther than San Francisco. Mm -hmm. um, but we need to bring those venture capital investors here to San Diego and also big pharma companies here to San Diego uh, to make investments in our biotech companies. Big pharma's present in San Diego largely through acquisitions that they've done, but it's the research folks who are here. Mm -hmm. We need to bring the licensing folks into San Diego to help our companies to, to be able to do those deals with, with Big Pharma. And then last but certainly not least, as the biotech companies mature and as we create more biotech companies, we need people to work in the research laboratories. We need today even more, we need computer engineers and data engineers. Um, we need the folks who have the talent in management to be able to drive commercialization um, beyond research and development where we've got a strong talent base. But mm -hmm. one of the things that we've never had in San Diego is a presence of large commercial pharma and biotech companies. Right. So when that happens, we have to go outside of San Diego yes. to find the talent. So we do a lot of work to um, develop programs within the universities here uh, to train people to go to work in the industry and ensure that we have the homegrown workforce that we need. Mm -hmm. We're, um, a as an organization, we're happy to participate that as well, and participate in that as well in the ecosystem in that we always have a steady stream of IPOs, uh, especially uh, in healthcare and life sciences that, that come out of this area, which is great. It's a nice way to, to contribute. Another challenge, but also opportunity, is big data in its relation to healthcare and life sciences. Can you talk um, a bit about that with your, uh, and how do you guys think about it as an organization and how your members think about it? Well, um, to begin with, our most recent strategic plan um, that goes from 2015 to 2020 is focused on ensuring that here in California and particularly here in San Diego in our headquarters location, that um, personalized medicine develops in a way that allows us to create drugs more efficiently mm -hmm. and to deliver those drugs to patients in a way that ensures their safety and their effectiveness and their, their affordability as well. So we've got some of the largest big data companies in the world here. Uh, the, the one that's most prominent, of course, is Illumina. Mm -hmm. um, and those companies continue to generate a database of genetic information that is going to allow our companies to bring down the development cost of drugs, to target the patient populations that they need to be working with for clinical trials and to actually deliver their, their drugs. And with big data, we'll be able to control ourselves, our own health. Mm -hmm. So these companies are revolutionizing healthcare. Uh, they're revolutionizing the ability to develop the drugs that we're developing in, in biotech. Uh, they're gonna bring costs down. They're gonna, they're gonna increase affordability. Um, and I say to people, just, just wait. I know we're having a big debate about drug prices right now, um, but it's, that's gonna change. And not only is drug pricing gonna change over time, these big data companies are developing genetic data 
that is going to allow us to be able to shut off genes that mm -hmm. cause a lot of the diseases that we're trying to treat with drugs right now. Mm -hmm. That's something I always share with people who aren't familiar with the area, but it's something that you can um, very much feel. It's tangible. We're on the doorstep of some really interesting paradigm shifts and sea changes with respect to that, um, led by great NASDAQ listed businesses like Illumina. So um, where do you see Biocom three to five years? I think um, the industry in, in California still has tremendous growth opportunity ahead of us. Um, Biocom just opened an office in Los Angeles. Mm -hmm. The Los Angeles biotech industry has huge potential and it's still in its infancy. We're beginning to see investors going to LA now for the first time to invest in biotech. Um, California collectively between San Diego, Orange County, Los Angeles and the Bay Area is the largest group of biotech clusters within any state in the country and certainly that makes it the largest biotech industry in the world. What Biocom is striving to do is to promote opportunity for our biotech companies, not only within the United States, but uh, across the Pacific Rim mm -hmm. and in Europe as well. We're beginning to create relationships now in places like Australia, uh, in, uh, in the UK. We already have an office in Tokyo with 50 member companies in Tokyo. We see more Japanese pharma companies that are looking to have a presence in San Diego. In the past, they were more interested in the more prominent biotech headquarters like San Francisco and Boston. Mm -hmm. But they appreciate the environment, the collaborative environment to work here in San Diego and the opportunity to access new technologies in San Diego. So we're working to bring more of those companies from Japan here to, uh, to California. Um, we're increasing our advocacy focus in Washington, D.C. Uh, we know that the challenges legislatively are going to continue, whether it's ensuring that we've got strong intellectual property protection or that the National Institutes of Health research budget is robust mm -hmm. uh, because that fuels the pipeline for research in our research institutes here, uh, or that we've got an FDA that has the budget that it needs to hire the staff to be able to efficiently review the products that we're developing. And so we'll continue to, to grow our presence in Washington as well. And, uh, and I think finally, um, we want to continue to build this strong network of uh, biotech companies that we bring together in a lot of different ways to be able to work together. That's what this industry is all about. Oh yeah, I would certainly agree. This has been a wonderful conversation, Joe, and I really appreciate your time. Um, it's great to have you. It's great to have Biocom participate in this theme week that's all about San Diego for us. Um, we're like-minded as a couple of organizations. Behind you, I brought a version of the, the San Diego's version of the NASDAQ Tower. And if you don't mind, would you mind, uh, we'll, we'll play a little lightning round game. Sounds good. All right, thanks. All right, this is the lightning round with Joe Panetta, CEO of Biocom. Joe, this works pretty simple. This is our tower. We have three categories, inside look, advice, and success. You can feel free to pick any of the numbers on the board. Um, you can go for higher points or lower points. Basically, the points don't matter. We just want to hear your great advice and counsel. Okay. okay. Let's uh, start the clock. Go ahead. I'm going to start with advice for 800. Perfect. Advice for 800. What is your best productivity hack? My best productivity hack I don't even know what a hack is, so forget <laughs> that one. Do you use a to-do list? Do you use uh... I, I make, I make to-do lists all the time. Perfect. Yeah. Next question. Uh, let's, let's try again. Advice for 600. Okay. Awesome. Love it. Who do you look up to? Uh, you know what? I, I, look, I look up to um, basically my parents and my relatives more than anything else. That's wonderful. Next question. Advice for 400. All right. <laughs> keeping, it, keeping it on the theme. What is the best advice you've ever received? Best advice I ever received was to go after whatever you want to go after with the greatest passion you could ever go after it with. That's awesome. Do you want to keep going on advice or no, try another category? Let's, uh, let's shift. Uh, why, why don't we go to success for 50? <laughs> okay, okay, success for 50. I love it. How would you describe your leadership style? I'm a delegator, and I have confidence in the people around me, and I surround myself with people who tell me what I don't know. Okay. Well, we've got time for two more. All right, let's do inside look for 800. Inside look 800. 
What is your favorite way to get organized? Um, my favorite way to get organized is to uh, sit down and, and uh, make a list of what I need to do. That's awesome. Um, next, one more question. Let's go. Uh, success for 800. Success, 800. Great topic. What are your metrics for success? Um, I always actually like to quantify what I'm going after and, and uh, I measure my progress against whatever that target is. That's awesome. I think we just got through the most cards so far as we've been doing the game. Joe, it's been a pleasure. Thanks, Dylan. Thank you very much. Thanks a lot.